in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed and yet you act like you can. Mighty God, we bless you. We worship you, oh God of heaven, the maker of the ends of the earth. Thank you for the privilege of worship. Thank you because you are God. There is none like you. Please let worship come from your heart, from the depth of your heart, even on to the King. Alabarus, Alabar. Bless him in the spirit. Bless him in your understanding. Let your attention be on Jesus tonight. Alright, you Just a few minutes of connecting deeply and truly with the God of the heaven. You are God. There is truly none like you. From everlasting, even to everlasting. We declare that you remain God, majesty. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. For making us who we are, for making us what we are, thank you. For Koinonia, for your grace, for your mercy, for your goodness. Parush Halabarubiata, for the privilege of fellowship with the Spirit, for the privilege of fellowship with the brethren, for the privilege of fellowship with the world. We thank you. Hallelujah. Father, tonight, let your word come like rain upon a thirsty ground. Please lift your voice and... Such a sweet atmosphere of the Spirit in this place tonight. Let your word come like rain. Until the Spirit be poured up from on high, then it says... The wilderness will be counted for a fruitful day. Then a fruitful ground for a forest. Hallelujah. Father, tonight we have come 
as proof that we love you. We have come tonight as proof that we want to learn, we want to grow, we want to rise to heights and dimensions unimagined. We have come tonight as proof that we are still interested in your dealings over our lives. We have come tonight as proof that we know the one who can change us, who can lift us, who can heal, who can deliver. We have come tonight as proof that we are grateful people, recipients of your mercy and grace. We have come tonight because we are hungry to receive the hallowed bread of the Spirit. We have come tonight because our hearts are thirsty. We have searched around and found out that you are the living bread and you are the water of life. Tonight I pray in the name of Jesus. Let there be the hearing of faith. Let there be the working of miracles. May your word come, O oh God, like fire from heaven. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. Please be seated, everyone. Hallelujah. It's my joy again to be around with us. Um, We're still going to pray tonight, and I trust that God will help us. First John chapter 2. First John chapter 2. I begin my reading from verse 12. Let me start um, to just encourage our hearts. First John chapter 2. Verse 12, I write to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. 13, I write unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, now listen, because you have overcome the wicked one. I write to you, little children, because you have known the Father. 14. I have written to you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I have written to you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. Grant us understanding even by the Spirit. Build our hearts, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. When scripture is talking to the young, it talks about two advantages that they have. Number one is that they are strong. Number two is that the word of God abiding in them has given them the ability to overcome a personality that the Bible calls the wicked one. Please listen. When he writes to the fathers, he describes that your advantage is your knowledge. There is something you have known about God from the beginning. When he writes to the young men, he says your advantage as young people is that you have strength and then that his word abides in you and on account of that abiding word that you have the power to overcome the wicked it is very important when the bible is is teaching us it's important that we focus on the context of what it is saying knowledge for the fathers strength and the grace to fight is the advantage of young people are we together now first john chapter 5 verse 4 apostle john is still teaching and he's teaching the believer that the life of a believer is not only a life of victory but a life of warfare verse 4 for whatsoever, not whosoever, is born of God, 
overcome it. He's still talking of overcoming. Listen, please. Young men, strength and the grace to fight. And he's saying whatsoever is born of God overcomes this system. And this is the victory that overcomes. There is victory that does not overcome. There is victory that calls for celebration. But here he's talking about a kind of victory that demonstrates that you are victorious by the experience of your overcoming this system. And he says, even our faith. Listen very carefully. He didn't say this faith produces that victory. He says the faith is the victory. Are we together now? You have to understand this. This is, for many years, I thought he's just talking of faith. You will learn something powerful tonight. That there is something called the faith that overcomes. That if a believer possesses that, the proof is that you will be able to rise above this system. And the Bible calls that faith. It does not say the faith produces victory. Uh -uh. That faith is victory itself. Are we together? Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 16. It starts by saying above all, above every spiritual equipping you have been given. Now remember that in the book of Ephesians, he's teaching the believer how to sit, a revelation of your position in Christ. Then he teaches how to walk, your walk of faith. Now he's teaching you how to stand against something he calls the wiles of the enemy. And he's saying that above all, that you can take a shield, a shield, I did a little of that during the prayer and fasting. I don't know if it was this year or last year. A shield of faith. And then it says, wherewith, with that shield, you shall have an ability. You don't have that ability until that shield is there. That when the shield comes, you will be able to quench how many? All the fiery darts of the wicked. The same wicked one John is talking about. So we know that when it has to do with warfare, Satan is revealed as a wicked man. Wickedness, that the whole world lied in wickedness. That is the character. Please listen. And then the Bible says that you can hold the shield of faith. And that with that faith you can quench all, not some, the fiery darts. I write to you young men. Don't forget what we are dealing with because you are strong. I write to you young men because you have an ability to fight and overcome. Are we together now? First Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 9. We we'll touch on four scriptures and then I'll begin to teach. Paul is teaching here and he's saying for a great door he's teaching the church in Corinth and an effectual is opened unto me so he's talking about open doors are we together now dimensions access a great door an effectual is open unto me he said but there are many adversaries a door of opportunity a door of growth, a door of grace. But he's saying, he's teaching us something here. That the moment you see doors opening, don't celebrate. Prepare to fight. That a great door is open unto me. But that the moment a door begins to be opened, he's teaching you that you should not be carried away by that door that is open the moment you see doors opening know that there are many adversaries and so young men get set when you see doors open take up your shield of faith because there is the wicked one are you are you getting what i'm teaching you now yes that for every door that is opened and effectual that means you can see the presence of the evil one to validate whether it was God that opened that door. And that you are prepared to fight 
with this shield of faith please understand i teach you a deep mystery that you will need for your spiritual life a great door and an effectual is open but many are the adversaries but the bible says you can take hold the shield of faith and you will be able to quench the fiery darts now listen it matters that we understand how we grow in the kingdom it matters listen please that we understand how we transit in the kingdom it matters that we understand how victory is wrought for the saints because for many believers we are aware of promises but we have not been mentored into the dynamics of walking into the experience of the life the power the grace of the kingdom and so while we are inspired by an expected end many times we are ignorant of the things that happen between egypt and canaan are you getting what i'm saying now so it is true that we fix our eyes on the end but we are never really taught to understand the many things the vicissitudes that we will face on the way and lack of listen lack of that understanding can do many things to our experience including not allowing us to arrive at the end spiritual maturity is not just the ability to be in church in fact it's not just the ability to read your bible to be equipped remember when he talks about fathers their advantage is knowledge you are fathers because you have an advantage of knowledge so when he talks about fathers he says you have knowledge there is something that you know when he talks about young men he says young men you are about to know something you do not yet know it but in your fight what you need now is the strength and the stamina to fight so that when you become fathers you will also be able to guide the young are you getting what i'm saying now fathers you have this knowledge because you fought and that experience taught you something about god that has become an advantage and a security for you young men you are your advantage is that you are emotion there is strength but there are many things you are going to know and then he says guard you with strength and stand in faith because a door is open towards you but there are many adversaries and you must understand the spiritual technology by which men fight until they grow to become fathers listen very carefully to what i'm about to teach you it's a very powerful mystery many believers are not trained to understand the things of the spirit and how to navigate the enemy please hear me this life is a combination of victories that appear when we fight a good fight of faith now i believe in the grace message don't get me wrong i believe in all of these dimensions of the kingdom but there is something about destiny that i want us to respect tonight that destiny is a threat to satan the very the very picture of destiny your fulfilling your destiny is the assurance that satan's doom is imminent and so when satan sees a man and a people with a destiny they become the center of his interest now many believers don't know this we have all kinds of wise sayings don't trouble me i don't trouble you and all of that and we have sometimes this false indoctrination that the only way you give satan the only way satan comes to you is when you look for his trouble you are joking go and read your bible well the, there is something the moment you carry that thing calls satan till you leave the earth please understand what i'm teaching you 
when there is prophecy upon your head when there is grace upon your life when there is a word upon your mouth when there is an interest upon your life satan is interested in you and let me tell you there is one thing about satan he has an undying interest he wants everything god wants and if that thing is you then listen to this message Koinonia is quiet. <laughs> the proposition that many believers have that you just know God, love God, worship God, engage principles here and there, you know, just speak the word here and there, and just cut walk into a glorious destiny is a joke. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but it's a joke. If it is destiny in Christ, if it's a life of victory, then please understand what I tell you, that there is faith that overcomes. Follow me as I teach. I have discovered that Satan's assignment, listen carefully, Satan's assignment is never to fight your faith. I used to think Satan was after our faith. I found out that's wrong. Satan is not after your faith. Satan is after the information upon which your faith was built. Now, please understand what I'm teaching you. Satan is not interested in your faith. Satan is interested in information, words. Because that is the basis upon which faith is built. Please understand this. <clears throat> There is no basis for faith until it is built on a word or the word as the case may be. Are we together? If I tell Pastor Alpha or Pastor Femi or Kenny or anybody, I say, come. I have called them. I have sent a word. They can place their faith upon it now. You see that? So what you really attack is not their obedience what you attack is the information if i tell pastor alpha come pastor femi come and they hear another voice that says go now that is an attack on information because in either ways it is going to necessitate action please listen to what i'm teaching you many believers get to a point in their Christian experience where they have access to spiritual information that many times begins to corrupt the pace of their work with God. There are many believers who the challenge in their life is information dependent. Satan just comes in to plant another information. Please hear what I teach you. We're going to go to Genesis and you see what happened to Adam and Eve. I, I thought Satan was after faith, action. No, he's after information. Hezekiah heard just one information from a prophet and Hezekiah's whole life went down. If prophet Isaiah never reached Hezekiah, he probably would be able to, maybe he would have died still. But just that information, one information. The apostles of the Lamb were walking with Jesus and they had one information. I'm about to die. I'm going and I'm leaving you. And that changed everything. Jesus, where are you going? A dead body had one information. And came back to life wine was finished one information was introduced and the next thing water was turned to wine listen to me this is a kingdom where we reign 
and this is a kingdom where Satan operates and this is also a kingdom where God operates by the power of spiritual information in fact information generally whether spiritual whether intellectual whether psychological our fight therefore in this kingdom is not necessarily a fight against spirits alone it's not necessarily a fight against antichrist systems alone the greatest warfare of a believer listen to me will be the warfare of words the warfare of information one information comes into your life or a series of information and it turns an ordinary student to become a doctor to become an engineer to become whatever it is information one information in a business seminar suddenly turns someone who has no hope of prospering he receives that information and that information turns his life around have you been taught that in this kingdom the maker and the breaker of men is information there is what we call IT today it's called information technology information is so powerful that technology was built around it people have become multi-millionaires because they have mastered the art of disseminating information they have created platforms around the world that connect people and supply information and they have prospered through it information is so powerful that when God is about to come and give Daniel an information he doesn't just speak from heaven he sends an angel with it to come that's how much he places value on information when Mary is about to receive Jesus Jesus coming to her like that she would not receive him an angel had to come before the journey of Jesus started she supplied an information and Mary said be it unto me hmm. Genesis chapter 3 now the serpent was more subtle than any of the beasts of the field which the Lord has made verse 2 and he said notice now we call this the fall of man theologically speaking of you know Adam and Eve now falling from that height and being banished out of the Eden of God and remember the entire story started with words Satan comes to the woman to the serpent and says what did God say please go back to verse 1 I want to find out all I am after is what information are you standing upon because the information is creating an effect in this garden and that effect is creating is not giving me allowance so for me to thwart the purposes of God I want to find out so I'm on a research what did God tell you and the woman said well verse 2 God said we may eat so God gave us access to the fruit of the trees of the garden verse 3 but of the fruit aha Satan's attention is coming now he says this and that and that you shall not eat neither shall you touch it and then he said what is the consequence that if you touch it you shall die so an information tied to life and an information tied to death are you getting what I'm saying now and then Satan does not say man leave the garden Satan does not say man I command you to die in fact Satan does not say man stop having faith he says man give me your attention next verse the serpent said ye shall not die do you know what he's doing he did not touch their faith he's redirecting where the faith is based upon now they still need faith to believe this 
Are you getting what I'm saying now? And the only thing he came was to withdraw nicely the information upon which their victory in the garden was predicated upon. And he shifted it and supplied another information. And they absorbed that information. Verse 5. It says, for God knows. For God knows. I write to you fathers, any father including God, that the advantage in fatherhood is knowledge. For God knows that the day you eat thereof, your eyes will be opened. And then you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Verse 6. Now, he said, when the woman saw, notice what the information started doing. The information was like a drug. We are not aware that he touched her. He just supplied an information. The first thing the information changed was perception. The eyes. The eyes started coming under the influence of that information. And then number two, an appetite started coming out that was not there. Now, look at how words are powerful. You will now know why God is called the word of God. The compendium of the thoughts of God. This is how Satan sent man out of Eden. Is it not amazing that he never used a sword? My brothers and my sisters, the greatest battles are not fought with knives. The greatest battles are not fought with blood and arrows and guns. The greatest battles is the energizings that information does to people. And the Bible says here that when she saw that it was pleasant and good for food, the Bible says she partook of it. Et, that information compelled action. He never touched her, but he made something that had entered her spirit and her mind to compel action. And then the Bible says that she gave unto her husband who was there and he did eat. Next verse. And the eyes of them both were open and they knew that they were naked and they sued fig trees. The long and short is he banished them out of the garden. This is the first official record in the Bible of man becoming a victim of Satan. This is the first official record of the warfare between man and Satan and Satan won. So it means that we have to go back and study what weapon he used. And he used the weapon of words. Weapons of information. Are we together now? Yes. There is another way of doing ministry that can produce great results. That information comes. I can put something in your pocket and suddenly the power of God will multiply. You were moving in innocence, but an information came. I will tell you something about informations. I just need you to know that the real warfare of a believer is a battle of information. Satan wants your mind because your, your destiny is not just God dependent. It's also dependent on the information that runs you. Your faith cannot be based on nothing. And whatever something it is that is the pillar of your confidence, of your results, that's what Satan wants. Please listen to me. The information upon which your faith is built, that is his concern. Satan is not interested in your faith as it were. He's interested because faith is simply conviction on an information and the corresponding action you take to demonstrate that you are convicted. That's it. So if I tell Tosin, I say, Tosin, go and collect that handkerchief from this gentleman. Now faith can come because I have released a word. Is that true? Yes. That word will stop him from doing what he was doing before and compel him now to act. So when you see him move, you call it faith. But faith would never have been there except that an information came. Now, assuming he's on his way going and I now stop him and give him another word, I say, don't worry, go back. What did I do? I turned his whole life around using information. Listen to what I teach you. 
there is power in this. Will you open up the gate? Open up the door. Will you open up the gates? of life to be open. Will you open up the gate? Open up the door. I want to show you why information is power, both in the realm of the spirit and in this realm. I want to show you why words are so powerful. God protects it with his name and calls himself the word of God. God does not call himself um, the hand of God as it were. He names himself after information. If God names himself after information, that information created the heavens and the earth. Something was said and suddenly made bones that were hiding to come out. Something was said that made bones that were dead to come back to life. Something was said that made fishermen to not be interested in fishing again. I can stop whatever you are doing now, not by fighting you. I only need to introduce something to you. I can move your life by information. I can stop your life by information. I can help you to be anointed by information. And I can destroy you by information. No wonder the founders of some of the great conglomerates around the world today, their product, the advantage is the vast access they have to information. Google, Facebook, they are a threat today to national security and the simple advantage is because they develop a psychological platform that compel the world to grant them access to information to the point that the US government has to call them. There are several cult groups today and everything that is discussed in those cult groups are privy information. Are we together now? Let me share with you the technology of words. I want to show you, that's not the topic for tonight. I want to show you why words are powerful. I want to show you why information is powerful. So that you will understand that every time a word goes before you, it's not just a time to jump. It's a time to begin to prepare. Because Satan is coming after that information. This charge I give unto you, my son Timothy, that you wore a good warfare. I've sent you with an information. I've done my best. Timothy, hold that information and fight until you win. Let me tell you why words are powerful. Second Kings. I mean, not Second Kings. Ezekiel chapter 2. I sense a strong anointing in this place. Look up, please. And he said unto me, Son of man, stand up on thy feet, and I will speak unto you. Verse 2. And the Spirit entered me. Wow. When he spake unto me, and that Spirit, the words just stop at my ear. And the spirit continued. The spirit started making my body to start acting in consonance with what was said. Now listen please. That he wanted me to move from where I was to another place. And he simply sent a word. And when that word got to the gate of my ears, it was not, it, it had finished his work like a tray. Every other thing that entered me was no longer sound, it was spirit. And that when it entered me, 
like a drug reacting to a patient have you swallowed a drug before and then you stand and the contraindications begin to work on you you start to feel drowsy and you are wondering remember you didn't ask the drug whether you wanted to be drowsy or not it entered you and started reconfiguring you I know your action by what you have received I look at your destiny and I can I can trace your victory or your problem to the presence of information what did God tell you your victory cannot be automatic so if what did God tell you in your conversation with him because in Genesis when you read Genesis chapter 2 it says now the Lord came the Hebrew word is the talking spirit the spirit that speaks the spirit that lives by speaking the spirit that changes a man's life by speaking now listen so for every word that is spoken there is a spirit the word spirit there does not just mean the Holy Spirit it means there is an energizing words and information carry energy they create a climate that compel action this is where religion and science both agree that words are powerful they are shapers of perception they are initiators of action words I write to you young men because you are strong and the word of God abides in you your strength is based on something you have heard and your victory is predicated upon a, a spiritual information supply there is a medical condition called brain damage there is also another medical condition called loss of memory it happens a lot with old people it's a state where because of whatever biological challenges you no longer have the retention power you can forget your wife your husband and medical people agree that is a dangerous state for a man to be in. there are people watch this who all of a sudden especially the elderly after 60 70 years of living on earth it could even be a pilot it could even be a professor just two months something affects the bank of information and the man can no longer walk his bones were not affected the information was withdrawn and he stands up and can no longer move and you ask him and say what is your name sir and he talks like a toddler the absence of information turn a man to a baby the technology of words words carry presence information carries energy whether they are spiritual information whether they are psychological information whether they are they are um, intellectual information that every time your the gate of your ears and your eye is open to information there is more that happens to you than awareness and enlightenment ladies and gentlemen now I want you to pay attention because I'm showing you a secret that is destroying our generation I show you the reason why men never stay until they win I show you a reason why very few people are victorious in this life do you know why because one of the worst things that happened to us on earth is a system that allowed information to go uncoordinated is one of the worst discoveries it is an advantage but what a, it was a galore for Satan when that happened there are still a few nations today now I'm not I'm not I'm not speaking political but there are a few nations today that still have some level from an earth realm from some level of sanity a bit and the reason why those nations have is the dictators the leaders there worked with the government to stop 
information dissemination. Is that true? When you study um, stories of men like Adolf Hitler, who led the campaign wanting to make Germany to speak about dominance, there were chants and cliches that they continued to put. It was on radio, it was everywhere. And all they were doing is indoctrinating the average German to believe he was superior. And it worked. He built an army not by recruiting men, information. Terrorist groups today continue to recruit people not necessarily by force they propose information that can make a young man who is on his way becoming a doctor to suddenly turn and say i want to become part of a group and will be willing to die for it hmm. whoever told you information is cheap whoever told you information is simple where God names himself the word of God, the information of God. So every time words come to you, here's the technology. When a word is spoken or you come in contact with words or information, the first thing that happens to you is your imagination is activated imaginations cannot be activated until there are words this is why words are dangerous words are the only instruments that have the power to activate imagery from where we get imaginations everybody look up imagine a yellow orange yellow orange big yellow orange now imagine that someone is cutting that orange with a knife are you seeing how whether you like it or not you are thinking what I'm saying you are not just hearing it I'm forcing your mind to move a direction by using the power of information now imagine a mother carrying a little baby imagine the baby trying to cry are you seeing how helpless your mind is provided the only way you can stop that imagination is to stop the information from reaching you but once it is there it has an ability that not even you can control again once it enters it's like a drug it starts to become an artist it paints images about God about life about Satan a little baby never believed that life can be hard till an information came he heard the father or the mother say Kai, this life self this life self and an image began to be created and that image listen it is dangerous because the moment an image is built your emotions are connected to the image the moment your emotions are connected to images creation begins immediately this is how things manifest please I want you to listen you would thank me for what you are learning today when the Bible says guard your heart with all diligence it knows what it's saying that means control the information that enters into your spirit man because out of it that information is not just words that information is not just speakings. That information is a potential for creation that can make or mar you. What Elijah is playing now is not just music. What he's playing now, they are words, they are spiritual information operating at different frequencies and because your tripartite nature was designed to understand this your ears may not know what he's saying but your spirit man knows that is the reason why they can use music to calm people down that is why when music was played a demon left Saul the demon had something that Saul did not hear the 
ear of Saul was not necessary. Just allow the string enter. When it gets to the realm of the spirit, it will change back to words and the spirit will know what is being said. Listen to me. Nations today have gone to war simply because of information. Whole territories have been annihilated because of information. There are people today in hellfire because of information. Who has believed our reports? To that man, the arm of the Lord has been made revealed. Words carry spirits. Words carry energy. And this is not some science nonsense. I am telling you, you literally can program your climate in less than a minute by the entrance. He said the entrance of your word give it light and understanding. That means show a confused man scattered in destiny. Just introduce the word of God to that person. And that's it. Your life will begin to reflect the information that you have. I'm saying this because, listen to me, our generation is very careless over our minds. Our generation is very careless over the power of words. In ministry, in life, people don't seem to have regard for words. Words are powerful. Words produce effects. Words can make. Words can destroy. Words can heal. Words can cause pain. Words are powerful. And if you understand this, words create imaginations and they connect us to those imaginations. When Satan wants a cause to remain in your family, he does not say cause remain. He uses words, the word of a priest, the word of an elder, words that have come from father to grandfather. Now you believe those words and when you believe those words, they create images. You are emotionally connected to those images and you are loyal to what you believe. That is the strength of the altar. The altar sits on your emotional connection to those words. The day you stop believing those words, you are ready for the power of God to smash that thing. That's why when the Holy Ghost comes, he now tells you, are you not aware that there is another information? Esther, listen, her man came and requested the king to approve an information. And an information was stamped already and the death sentence of the people were waiting. They were going about every day. They did not know that they had finished killing them by information. Even when her man died, they were still in trouble because the real enemy was not her man. The real enemy was the information. Esther knew that the death of her man had not yet solved that problem. Information. And so Esther went to the king and said, do you know what? You have to write another information that can give an upper hand to preserve my people. It was at that Esther chapter 6 that the story ends with honor and glory. Information. Words. There's what they call April Fool. Many of you do it. People have collapsed because of April Fool. Others have died and no opportunity to tell them I'm joking again. Now watch this. You go to an ATM to withdraw money. Remember the ATM does not speak English. You are just using your eyes. Withdraw for me 5,000 and the ATM says cash unavailable. Immediately that report depresses you, you stand there. A machine did not flog you. A machine did not speak your language. It only created an energy. Remember, you are smiling. The joy of the Lord is my strength, bouncing to the ATM. And suddenly, because you punch and it said cash unavailable, you start thinking, this is how my life is. It did not ask you to think that way. While you are laughing, take seriously what I'm saying. Satan waits until the information has been connected to your imagery. Then he comes. He will create a system around it. Sit upon it and your doom becomes almost imminent. This is the victory that overcomes. What victory? 
the labor in the spirit to protect the information. It is real warfare and it produces real victory. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? There are, there are many of us here that are parents. Why do we prefer, now please, I'm, I'm, this is respectful with all my heart, but why will a parent prefer to carry a child to a mission school than an ordinary public school? It may not necessarily just be the standard. The parent wants to keep the child within a sociological sphere that regulates the quality of the information that is in the mind of the child. And to do that because it's not cheap, you will pay for it. That's the reason why a school where there can be people, there's no gate in and out. Anybody can lean on this class and suggest you can pay next to nothing. But there are people who pay millions per term on a child. And you are wondering, it is not only the knowledge they are paying for, they are paying for the atmosphere. Are we together now? When you go to Transcorp, or you go to any of these modern day hotels, you buy a cup of coffee and you can pay 5,000. Stroll 30 meters, 10 meters from that place, you will get the same coffee, hello, the same hot water, the same everything for less than 500 naira. So what did you really pay for? Because your access to that place can give you an information. You can be seated in a lounge when two millionaire businessmen are discussing and you will hear something that can be an advantage. You can be there when politicians are talking. So you are not only paying for tea, you are paying for the energy that you are receiving there. Why does Satan fight your coming to Koinonia? Did you hear the wonderful testimony of that, my dear brother? Why does Satan fight tooth and nail? He knows that it is not only the speakings of a man. That more than what you are hearing, there is a spirit. Please hear what I'm saying. Somebody testified that he got an alert. What did the alert do to him? Notice he had not verified whether the alert would be reversed. As soon as he saw it, he just started becoming glad. Watch this. A student stands in front of the board. He's coming with his friend to check his result. Glory be to God. I'm happy. We'll all be graduates. And he stands in front of the board. And in two minutes, he sees an information. Three carryovers. And that person is there. And for the next one week, he cannot become himself again because an information came imagine that while he's standing there somebody just comes and says sorry it's a mistake it was not your number watch this. immediately he will change back now watch this look at how you are moving at the frequency of information like people who check admission list and don't see their names and they go back depressed and then they see a text congratulations say for what say you got admission say no you are checking your first name check your son name and you quickly check and that's your name immediately you start to dance the information did not tell you to dance it created an energy that supplied action are you getting what i'm saying now that means if words create imaginations that connect us emotionally to it, then we must guard the words and the information that comes to us. Another thing with words is that they compel us to think and act in honor of the persuasions obtained. To think and act in honor of the persuasions. You receive an information that your loved one has gone to be with the Lord. That information does something to you. That's why you cry. That information does something to you. That's why you are gloomy and agitated. That information does something to you. The same way you receive an information, somebody just blessed you with a house. That information does something to you. Now listen to me. Listen to me. When you become a master at creating your own spiritual, emotional, and sociological climate, you have become a master indeed. 
Do you know why I'm saying that? Because for every open door you read, there are many adversaries. And guess how the adversaries act? They operate through words. Through words. You will be promoted to a company as soon as you get there. You will be happy until you hear that there is tribalism in this company. The moment you hear it, it begins to affect you. A believer has the responsibility, please hear me, in honor of your destiny, in honor of the purposes of God, you have a responsibility under God to set a guard, not just over your mouth, but over your mind, to control the information. Unfortunately, our world today is full of all kinds of information. People have entered divination not knowing, because in a bid to search for truth, they stop across Greek and Hebrew words who went to Latin words who went to ancient words who went to magical chants and before you know it they found themselves in all kinds of things I learned this about my life and I learned this from uncommon mentors and when I learned this it I made it a personal responsibility that my life I was going to guard with jealousy because the information that you are connected to ignites creation and sooner or later you will begin to see those information notice I am a doctor this is a patient he's feeling a little bit of pain in his side and then he comes to me and I run a test and I tell him sir you have cancer and based on this cancer, I'm not saying doctors are wrong. It is at stage four. And usually, statistics, we built a statistics around this information. That at this stage of cancer, you have between six months to one year to live. Any other encouragement you give that man is a waste of time. The information has entered. Let me tell you what will begin to happen. My child is only nine years. What am I going to do with my nine-year-old child? And then the spirit of fear rides upon that information and comes. I hope you know that there are cases that don't reach nine months. Fear is coming. The next thing, the spirit of suicide comes. What good is living? While all of this is happening, watch this. Those possibilities will now be making all of these foundational things look strong and powerful. As though they veto you and walk, they depend on your partnership, your reception of words. Now watch this. He said, young men, the word of God abides in you. That means when that kind of report comes, there should be, if you are a believer, there should be war within your spirit. If there is no war, it's a sign that you are not holding the shield of faith and you are not an overcomer. Because it is expected that it should enter and meet another information. And listen, when the world went to hell, there was war in hell. Are we together now? Satan mimicking, attempting to be the light bearer. The word, and then the word himself, the logos of God, there was war in hell. And he triumphed over them and came out as the firstborn of the begotten. The war happened in the realm of the spirit, but the result was seen in the physical realm. The war always happens in the realm of the spirit. The death happens in the realm of the spirit. The defeat happens in the realm of the spirit. And all we see is the physical manifestation. Satan and Jesus did not come to the earth. And then they came out and said, wow, now we no, 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 no. The battle was won there. The keys were collected. And he came out victorious and said, all hail, all power. Immediately he resurrected. He spoke straight up. There is something you need. Disciples come together. In three days, you had something that changed your mind. Little children, come. Feed my lamb. Tarry in Jerusalem. The Holy Ghost is coming. Information. That's what he left them with. When the angels came, they said, why look up, you know, to the sky? This same Jesus you have seen, he will return. That became the basis of salvation, the death, the burial, the resurrection of Christ. Paul created a theology out of that information. That is where we stand today. He calls it the power of God unto salvation. 
please listen to what I tell you. Our children watch cartoons and people get initiated. Why? Because of information. Notice that when these children hear, they start chanting what they are saying, even if it's part of what they are saying, whether or not they understand it, and they become emotionally connected to it, and it begins to affect them. I write to you, young men, because you are strong. Fathers, you know this, you are equipped in knowledge. But I write to you, young men, because you are strong. I write to you, young men, because the word of God is abiding in you. And because of that abiding word, Satan is going to come. And when he comes, fight. What fight? The fight of allowing the word of God gain superiority. He said, let God be true and let every man be a liar. This is the warfare of the believer. I got a report from home in the name of Jesus. Let the word of God well up within me. I decree and declare there is no death in my family. There is no going down. There is only rising up. The hand of God is upon me. You are fighting the warfare. You are using that faith that the Bible calls is the victory. I give you a guarantee. There is one thing Satan does not have. An indefinite power to survive. It is the keeper of Israel that does not sleep nor slumber. Satan can be weary. But there are many weak believers. We sit down and allow the devil shred our lives into pieces. We sit down and allow the devil to take advantage. Do you know there are people right now who are like, if you can imagine in the realm of the spirit, imagine chains that are a result of several presents that came because of words. You will fail. You will die. Your life will not rise. You are good for nothing. And you sit down and it leads to depression. The birth of anything valuable is painful. It will require you knowing how to fight Satan. I'm saying this because this thing is killing people all over the earth. Internet. People go online and type something. Go online and just put something. Bam, and they hear an information that depresses their life forever. Oh, the job you did. With that class, there is a statistics like this that out of the so 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 million of graduates, only three in 10 years. See, let me tell you the truth. And I submit to you many information on this earth are useless as far as your life is concerned, as far as your victory is concerned. You have an assignment to lean and help the spirit of truth to guide you into the truth that are necessary for your life. If you expose yourself to just any and every kind of information, you will lose the anointing, you will lose relevance, you will lose power. Your strength is in your protecting that information. You must guard yourself. Is God speaking to us? This gentleman sings. I can tell him one word. Your song is beautiful. It will take you around the earth. He can carry that information and be working with it until he meets a manager. And the manager looks at him and says, what tribe are you? You are not this tribe. Mr. Man, I don't want to lie to you. I'm sorry. Another information creates presence. Listen, we are going to pray tonight. And many of you do not know that you are in the, you are in the midst of different demonic energies that have come from words. And because you are connected to these various things, they make good things look evil. It is this energy that will make good people look like devils. Even if somebody looks at you and says, nice hair, you say, nice hair for what? You are reacting to an energy. There are information that has come to you that nothing good will come out of your life. So it corrupts your perception. When God says, I want to lift you, like Mephibosheth, you say, am I a dog? God, go and lift others. 
tonight we have come to tear these things is why people don't prosper let me tell you it doesn't matter what kind of business you do the real business is the business of information is the reason why no great businessman will teach anything valuable everywhere they will call you and culture you and make sure you are ready to receive what they are telling you there was something Peter, James, and John saw and knew that the rest did not know. That was why they became the pillars. There are things God has shown me in my life about himself. There are things God has revealed to me. They become the objects of my protection because they are the pillars of my success. And if anything happens to them, then it will shred my life into pieces and I will continue to labor to protect them. Let me tell you this, your atmosphere is waiting for you to stand in faith and tear down that atmosphere. Otherwise, I don't care what kind of deliverance you do. You will get up and fall down. Your life will never change that atmosphere. I can stand in front of this guy and pick the signals of depression. I can stand in, not word of knowledge, I can pick the signals of discouragement. Why? Because I am also a spirit being and this guy has been programmed by an atmosphere. Let me tell you this, human beings are simply walking atmospheres, carrying their possibilities around. And you have an assignment under God to fight this warfare of preserving your atmosphere, the insistence. It's called the faith that brings victory. You must be careful what you say to yourself. You must be careful what you say to others. You must be careful what you hear from yourself. You must be careful what you hear about others. It is not the information, it is the effect on your life, on your destiny. It is the effect. Um, a few days ago, I, I was watching an interview between some of the billionaires in the world and I was shocked at the, they are so cultured. Words are expensive to them. You see the way they speak. And then I was watching CNN. I don't know when was it. I was just watching uh, a, a, an impeachment probe that, that is going on and so on and so on. And I mean, you, you could see the way those guys were meticulously words. Just one word, not said correctly, can be the... And I said, ah, God, grant me the grace to master words. If my destiny is word dependent, then do something to my life. This is more than the ability to speak English. This is the ability to make sure that your communications are cultured, seasoned with salt. Number two, to ensure that you have an atmosphere that is a shield. That faith, immune by the word of God. When death comes, it finds an information. When discouragement comes, it finds an information. You are enveloped in it. Just like that, the shield. Please hear me. The days that are coming will require this understanding. The days that are coming, you will need to be the prophet of your own destiny. The days that are coming, you will need to set a guard over your mind. Your prosperity depends on it. Your lifting depends on it. Those of us in ministry, listen twice. Let me tell you, the days that are coming, you must master the art of ensuring that your spiritual climate, that your intellectual climate, that your emotional climate is seasoned with the word of God. It's an assignment you must do because a lot depends on it. Let me show you one scripture and then we'll find a place to pray. Second Kings chapter 7. Please pray in the spirit in one minute. Second Kings chapter 7. Second Kings chapter 7. 
2 Kings chapter 7. Hallelujah. Please look up. Watch this. Then Elisha said, this is the prophet, hear ye the word. He, he wants to change farming now. I want to show you the technology. Until now, Samaria is under siege to the point that women are eating their children. Do you think those women started eating their children like that? Somebody must have said something that made women to see their children as food because children are not food. Tomorrow about this time, information, everybody say words. Shall a measure of flying flour be, be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria? Next verse, verse 2. And then this other Lord said a lot of things. Simply because he did not fight the prophet. He fought the information that came from God. And there was a consequence. He said, behold, thou shalt see it with your eyes, but thou shalt not eat thereof. Next verse. Now, watch how God brings his word to pass. Look up, please. We're about to pray. There were four leprous men at the entering in of the gate. And they said, the spirit of prophecy made them to start saying to one another, are you seeing how this thing works? Arushala kusiata. They were not talking to themselves before, but an anointing came. As soon as that anointing came, information started coming. Why they said to one another, why sit we here till we die? Was that the first time they were sitting there? They had been there, but see, every word is sponsored by spirits. Listen to what I tell you. When they were prophesying, I hope you know these four lepers did not hear it. They did not hear the prophecy, but the spirit that went with that prophecy started searching for men. And they were sitting, they didn't even know a spirit had come upon them. The next thing, the urge to talk. And they said, why should we sit here and die? And as soon as they started contemplating, go back, go to verse 4. If we say we will enter the city, then famine is in this city and we shall die there and if we sit here we will die also please talk to me what has this got to do with four lepers sitting down it is not about leprosy it is creation about to happen but creation cannot happen until spiritual information come even for lepers even if you cannot walk you can hear it says now therefore come they are talking to one another. Let us fall onto the host of the Syrians. If we save us alive, we shall die. If they kill us, we shall but die. Look at this. These are people sitting at the gate, running away from hunger. And in minutes, courage comes upon them. And they make up their mind, let's just go and give ourselves to our enemy. If we die, information. Now watch this. Verse 5. And they rose up, what time? At twilight. To go to the camp of the Syrians. And when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no man there. What happened? Next verse. Hallelujah. Mako Sibra Katushiata. For the Lord made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise. He did something to their perception. They got an information. I'm showing you how they ran away. They got an information. And then even a great noise. And they said, the same way the leper said to one another. This guy said to one another, Lo, the king of Israel had hired against us. Are you seeing what perception does? It gives you ideas that are not there. They, there was no business. The kings themselves were afraid. But here is an information making a weak man look strong. The king had hired against us the kings of the Hittites, the Egyptians, and so on and so forth to come upon us. Wherefore, they arose and fled also in the twilight and left their tents, their horses, their asses, 
abandoned the camp as it was and fled for their life. Eight. And when these lepers came to the uttermost part of the camp, they went into one tent and did eat and drink. And they carried silver, gold, raiment, and went and hid it. And came again and entered into another tent and carried all of this, verse 9, to tell you it was the Spirit of God. They now said, the same Spirit now made them to pass another information. It would have stopped at them stealing to run away, but the goal would not be achieved. The goal was the salvation of Samaria, not the healing of four lepers. So the Spirit now came and still made them to say to one another again, we do not well. Same Spirit. Can you imagine that? One moment they are stealing and running away and happy. Next moment they are convicted and say we do not do well. This is the day of good tidings and we hold our peace. If we tarry till morning, what if some mischief come upon us? Now therefore come, let us go to the king's house and tell him this good report. That king, we came and found food here. Four lepers were used to save a nation through the power of words. I'm showing you the technology. If one of those lepers, just one, said I'm not going, the rest would have been discouraged. It was the spirit of God that made all of them to unanimously agree. Man of God, let me show you where the next level of your ministry is. It's not just in a man. It is in an information. There is something you can hear. There is something you have heard. There is something you are hearing that is shaping your life literally. We are products of the information that we have heard. There is something Koinonia has heard that has been the building block upon which the faith of God rests. There is something our families have heard that has authorized darkness to defeat us. Tonight in prayer is a warfare of words. To stand to say, Lord, a generation depends on the quality of not only my spiritual enlightenment, but the warfare. My children are depending on the quality. Listen, let me tell you this. The Bible says, I think it's Mark 4 or so. Did I write it here? Mark chapter 4 and verse 24. Let me show you God's standard. It says, take heed what ye hear. With what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you. That means hearing is also sowing when you hear it's like a farmer putting seeds and he said that if you hear you are drawing more of that that means you keep attracting more things to your life are you seeing why more tragedies continue to come to people because their minds continue to create the climate for it this is where it comes from it shall be measured to you and unto you that hear shall more be given more of what you hear more of what you hear if you hear the word of god you hear things that build you more of it will come you hear about the anointing it will bring the anointing more of it will come you hear about that's why we must be careful now i minister deliverance and all of that but i have a little problem with talking about satan and talking about demons every day and forever it is dangerous because more than the information you are trying to pass, you are shaping the minds of the people to the point that they will never ever see victory again. When Isaiah, the year that King Uzziah died, Isaiah told us what he saw. He said, I saw the Lord. I saw the Lord. Son of man, what seest thou? You must choose what you hear. Parus Kadia. You must choose what you see. Words is a battle of destiny. Please understand what I'm telling you. It's a battle of destiny. Words are like drugs. The only thing is that they don't enter through your mouth. Once they enter your spirit, they can keep you poor. 
they can keep you less anointed but when you embrace the engrafted word it is able to make you this is the place of encounter this is the place of surrender this is the place where my flesh gives way do to me what you want this is the place where my life is changed do to me what you want the disciples went into hiding because of something they heard. As soon as Jesus resurrected, he told Mary Magdalene, he said, Ron, go and tell them this new information. Jesus is alive, he's risen. The tomb is empty. As soon as she went to tell them, that information gave them energy. Listen, you are dying today physically because of something that entered your ears something else must enter you tonight as the spirit something else I am able I am well able I am well able 12 spies were sent 10 of them came with something called an evil report the Bible did not call it an honest report it called it an evil it was their perception they brought and the Bible says I don't care if it's not the word of God it's an evil report and Joshua and Caleb said let's go up at once he said we are well able they were the only two that entered the promised land listen listen you must make it a project to frustrate Satan in your life you must make it a project to disallow. He is at the mercy of your understanding this truth. I write to you fathers because you have known. I write to you sons because although you do not know, you have strength. You can fight and experience can come out of your battle. That when you now become fathers, you can mentor other sons. I write to you fathers, young men, because the word abides in you. So when words come, it's a battle of words and you fight in the spirit to preserve those words. Listen, he said, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost comes. But what they received made them to speak. On the day of Pentecost, fire came on their head but the reaction was speaking. They began to speak. From that speaking, 3,000 were saved. From that speaking, the church began to advance. Please hear me. Your destiny is bigger than your today. Man of God, this level of ministry, is only the starting point and let me tell you this if you can hold on to that victory the bible calls the fight to protect god's information the victory that overcomes the victory that overcomes the victory that overcomes the victory that overcomes overcomes lift your voice and begin to blast in the spirit the victory that overcomes the victory that overcomes in the name of Jesus the victory that overcomes even our faith the victory that overcomes even our faith the victory that overcomes even our faith the victory that overcomes the victory that overcomes Pray, be a speaking spirit tonight. Pray, be a speaking spirit tonight. Be a speaking spirit tonight. 
Hallelujah. Prayer point number one. Hear me. Hear me. It was through the power of prayer a physical climate changed from a dry season to a rainy season. Any climate can change when we pray. Elijah prayed dry season to become rainy season. You are going to pray that every atmosphere and every climate that ministers death, that ministers discouragement, that in the name of Jesus, both the information and the atmosphere live my life. Speak to it. Speak to your childhood. Speak to your limitations. I come in the name of the Lord, the captain of the armies of heaven. pray. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 10. Read with me. One to read. There are, as it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world and none of them is without signification. That means no voice at all is just a social voice. No voice at all is just a technology voice. No, every voice is programming your destiny. Whether it is the voice of a mentor, the voice of the word of God, the voice of culture, the voice of your childhood, the voice of your family, you are going to pray. The Bible says bringing down every stronghold and every thought to the obedience of Christ. Lift your voice and tear down words and information.
Hallelujah. Listen to me. The Bible says, while men slept, the enemy came and sowed seeds and went his way. But the Bible says, every tree that has not been planted by my father, in the realm of your spirit and in the realm of your mind, you are going to uproot and tear down by faith. Lift your voice and declare, I uproot every speaking. I uproot every foundation. I uproot every perception. I uproot every communication that is not consistent with the character. Every communication that is not consistent with my goal, with my destiny, with my dominance. I call against it in the name of Jesus. Is someone praying tonight? Hallelujah. Please look up while I still pray. It's a strong anointing here. The Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee. But we need to know how we resist the devil in this kingdom. Matthew chapter 4 verse 10. Please give it to us quickly. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 10. Resist the devil. Matthew, help us media. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 10. This is how Jesus rebuked and resisted the devil. Then said Jesus to him, Get thee then, Satan, for it is written. That is the basis. It is written. Not I think, not I wish, it is written. The victory that overcomes is a victory that is written. Written. The logos. Get thee thence poverty, for it is written. Get thee thence limitation, for it is written. Lift your voice and declare, Satan away from my destiny, away from my life. It is written. Speak scripture. It is written. It is written. Get the pens from ministry. Get the pens from business. Get the pens from finance. Get the pens for it is written.
Hallelujah. Prophet Joel. Prophet Joel taught us a very deep mystery. In chapter 3, please give it to us while praying. Chapter 3 and verse 10, Joel. Joel 3 and verse 10. Beat your plowshares into swords. In other words, it's time for the fight of faith. And your pruning forks into spares this is not just a time for harvest it's a time for warfare and then he says in that warfare let the weak say i am strong let the poor say i am rich let the redeemed of the lord say so you are about to say so now this is strategy everything the bible says you are Everything the word of God says you are, you are about to say it now. Lift your voice and begin to prophesy. I am strong. In the name of Jesus, I am blessed. If someone pray, I am anointed. My business is flourishing, pray. The ministry is flourishing by the Spirit. My home is flourishing by the power of the Holy Ghost. My finances is flourishing by the Spirit of the Christ. I go from glory to glory. I go from grace to grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. And listen to me. You are going to declare. The Lord spoke to us that this is our year of extraordinary fruitfulness. You are going to pray and prophesy. It must be as he said. It must be as he said. Over every area of my life. Lift your voice now and begin to pray. It must be as said. Ressort, 
Job chapter 5, verse 19. Job chapter 5, verse 19. We'll read 19 and 20. Job chapter 5. Job chapter 5. Are we there? He shall deliver thee in six troubles. Yea, in seven shall no evil touch you. Verse 20. In famine. This is the first kind of trouble that comes upon men in the earth. Famine. He shall redeem thee from death. In war. He shall redeem thee from the power of the sword. 21. Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue. Neither shalt thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. At destruction and famine thou shalt laugh. Neither shalt thou be afraid of the beasts of the earth. For thou shalt be in league with the stones of the field. Listen, this is a mystery that one day God will grant me the grace to teach in this place. The word league is covenant. That you will be in, in a covenant with the stones of the field. And the beast of the field shall be at peace with you. Listen, he said in six troubles, yes, seven. He shall deliver you. You are about to pray these prayers in famine, in war, the speakings and the tongues of men. Lord, arise by the Spirit and let my life see your salvation. Let my life see your salvation. Lift your voice and pray. Are you praying? Every <laughs> 
of the sea, every zone, the beast of the sea, and the day of every port of call, every king of the sea, don't shut up, 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 don
over anything in your life that must change in this season that must change you are going to enforce the word of god with power and grace i like you to lift your your voice mention the areas that must change place a demand don't let the devil speak things to your ears is it your finances? Is it your family? Is it your spiritual life? Listen to me. You can create a new effect. You can create a new atmosphere. You can create a new image. You can win. The word of God abides in you. Open your mouth and declare. 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 The word of the Lord. In the glory and the power, I see miracles, signs and wonders. In the glory and the power, I see miracles. I'm a sign and wonder. to me it said son of man what seest thou hold on hold on you are going to pray lord change my perception about life my perception about god my perception about my circumstances my perception about satan do a miracle to my sight lift your voice and pray do a miracle Change my perception. Every image, every emotional connection to every image that is birthing pain, that is birthing impossibilities, that is allowing darkness to reign over my life. Change my perception. Koinonia pray a miracle of the seen eyes. Shalaba, 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 Arete Kili Abando. Change my perception. The Bible says, For we know that all things work together for good to them who love God and who are the called according to His purposes. Lift your voice and pray. Change my perception. Change my financial perception. My spiritual perception. My career perception. My sociological perception. My emotional perception. Let my perceptions be lined up to and with the world. Let my perceptions be lined up to and with the world. Take it to Paris, Elento, Shalabaria, 
Save my perception in the name of Jesus. Save my perception. My perception of ministry. My perception of life. My perception of my family. My perception of increase. My perception of your purpose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's have the last prayer point for tonight. Listen. The victory of the believer is in staying and hearing and seeing the word of God. But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror, we are changed into the same image, not another. You will become the reality of the information that enters your life. You will become weakness when you hear weakness. You will become weakness when you hear weakness. You will become strength when you hear strength. Listen to me. You will become powerful when you hear power. You will become full of faith when you hear faith. You will become a man of speed when you hear words of speed. You will become revived when you hear words of revival. You will become a man of fire when you hear words of fire. Listen, your thinking makes your belief system and it translates into who you are. You have an assignment to from today and forever protect yourself. Protect yourself. Protect yourself from the influence, the arsenals of culture, the arsenals of Satan, the arsenals of past, your past, the arsenals of your weakness, career, whatever it is. Make up your mind that you sustain the stamina to stay on that which is written. For the Bible says, listen to me, that heaven and earth will pass away, but this word abides forever. The Bible says he upholds all things, not by ideas, by the word of his power. So no matter what you are going through in your life, you are not defeated if what is written is still in your mouth. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. I'm rounding up. This book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night consistently that thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein. Then and only then shall thou make your way prosperous and thou shall have good success. Last prayer. Lord Jesus, magnify your word and the voice of the Holy Spirit above every other voice and influence in my life. Lift your voice and pray. Magnify. Magnify. If someone pray, magnify your word above my circumstances magnify your word above my limitations magnify your word above ministry magnify your word if someone pray lord i want to see your word exalted be lifted high, be lifted high, oh Lord, be lifted high, for you are holy, righteous and
lifted above the doctor's report. Lifted above the class of degree you finished with. Oh Lord, be lifted. Lifted above every worry that plagues you down. Oh Lord, be lifted. It is within the power of God to lift a man. It is within the power of God to take weak men and set them as kings and princes. It is within the power of God to prosper a man. Please listen to what I tell you. It is within the power of God to keep a man. It is within the power of God to bring deliverance and to bring salvation. It is within the power of God to give you a new name that the mouth of the Lord himself will call lifted exalted that when you stand through life anything that is not the word of God you have an assignment to fight that fight it's not a weak fight it's a great fight until that which is written becomes your experience until everything that you see is Jesus. Until everything that you see is his grace, his life, his power, his wisdom. Until everything you see is that what you saw in your dreams and your vision now becomes your experience. You continue to set your gaze on Jesus until you see that anointed version of you that you saw in your dream. No matter what you see in your life, don't let men clap you to your grave. If it has not become what you saw, keep pressing. Lord, I thank you, but I keep seeing. We are able to go out and take the country. To possess the land from Jordan to the sea. Though the giants may be on our way to hinder. God will surely give us victory. We are the generation that is well able. Regardless of your background, you are well able. It may not look like it until the word of God gains ascendance. Your assignment is to believe his report and to stay there. Apostle, but you do not understand. I didn't get admission. Apostle, as I am right now, I don't even know where the next meal will come from. Apostle, I've prayed and fasted for the anointing, for things to move in my life. It doesn't matter what it is. My brothers hear me. My sisters hear me. You are only victorious when you stand on God's side. Stand. Continue to exalt his word. Lift it above. Once it stands above, you will see what that word will do. It will become not only an anchor, it will become a cover. It will become the basis for your victory. Hear me? Even the hand of God wrote twice. That means whatever was written can be rewritten. Did you hear what I said? The hand of God wrote once and wrote again for Moses. Isaiah, go back to Hezekiah. Tell him I have changed my mind. Hezekiah, there is no death for you again. Please pay the price to know God. Pay the price to know God. Hezekiah, you will continue to be king. I have shifted the sun to prove to you that I have rewritten. Esther meets the king and says, write again, O king. It was her man that deceived you to write. You wrote death. It is within your power to write life again. And the king said, bring me the paper. And he wrote and stamped it. Hear me? No matter what has been written over your life, I stand by the word of God. Listen to me. In this kingdom, please hear me. 
there is a heavy anointing on me. I want to pray for you. Listen. It says, my heart is indicting a good matter. Yea, I speak of excellent things. It says, my tongue is the pen of a ready writer. I want to write something in your life by the Spirit. It is true that what was written can be rewritten. Please, you don't have to kneel. You don't have to kneel. Please stand. It is true that the ordinances and the appointments of death the appointments of failure. It is true that the expectations of wicked people waiting, believing that your family will not amount to anything, that your life will go down. Tonight I stand by the Spirit, indicting a good matter. He said, yeah, I speak of excellent things. And he says, my tongue is a pen of a ready writer. I stand by the God of heaven who calls men by his grace. I declare whatever was written that is an appointment unto death i change it and i speak life to you now hear me if esther did not come to mordecai it was not only if esther did not come to the king it was not only her man Hear me, look at me, let me teach you a mystery. If Haman died and Israel died, God lost. The verdict that was in the presence of the king was not just for Haman, it was also for Israel. And Esther came and said, King, right again. The verdict that plagues families and plagues individuals. Hear me. It is not only for your grandfather alone. It affects everybody. It is not only for Nigerians alone. But we are standing like midwives. Like Esther. To say king. Right again. In the name of Jesus. Every appointment unto derision, unto death, unto causes, unto woes. I stand as one who stands by the election of grace and I declare that ordinance is changed over your life. Please help them. That ordinance is changed over your life. Hear me. It was unfortunate for Herod. Herod spoke against Peter. And he was speaking against the gospel. But there were saints who were praying. There was nobody to advocate for Herod. Herod fell from his throne. Died immediately. And worms came out of his body. They are taken for a prey and none say it restore. Listen, restoration is advocated for through the power of prophecy. I decree that anything that has become a programming over your life and destiny to sabotage the purposes of God over your life, I stand by the power of words and in the name of Jesus we create a new outcome for you I love to pray I bow before you, lifting you high. I worship your holy name. I love to worship. I love to praise. I love to praise. I bow before you. I bow before you, lifting you high. Lifting you high. I worship your holy name. 
I love to worship. I love to praise. I bow before you, lifting you high. I worship your holy name. I love to worship. I love to praise. I bow before you. For the last time, hey, I love to worship. I love to pray. I bow before you, lifting you high. Hallelujah. Lord, let your word bless us tonight. We have come to receive, we have come to be changed. Let your word bless us. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Hallelujah. Just hug your neighbor and be gloriously seated. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you for coming. He will increase you and he will cause you to walk in glory. In the name of Jesus. Joel chapter 2. Please bring out your writing materials. It's important that you come with your writing materials because you will need to write a lot of things. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the King of glory. Lord, we love you. Joel chapter 2. If you are there, say amen. Verse 4. The appearance of them is like the appearance of horses. And like horsemen, so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots on the top of mountains, shall they leap. Like the noise of a flame of fire that devoreth the stubble. Like a strong people set in battle array. 7. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. And they shall march everyone on his way. And they shall not break their ranks. Neither shall one trust another. They shall walk every man on his path. They shall walk every man on his path. He said they shall walk every man on his path. Tonight's teaching is very important. It changed my life years ago. When the Lord opened my eyes to this revelation. And I pray that it will change somebody's life tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Tonight I'm teaching on a very powerful subject. Walking in your purpose. Walking in your purpose. Walking in your purpose. The Bible begins to give us in the book of Joel a description of a great army. And the Bible makes us to understand that this army, they were like mighty men. They leaped upon walls. Hallelujah. The Bible says that every one of them, none broke their ranks. That every one of them walked in his path. Who are these men? This class of fearful people. Hallelujah. Every one of you say after me, I was born for a reason. Say it as loud as you can. I was born for a reason. I am not a biological accident. I'm not one of the many people in the earth. I was born for a reason. I have an assignment. I have a mandate. I have an anointing 
I have a destiny. The world is full of people who found themselves in the middle of time. Didn't know why they were born and they die without discovering why they came upon the surface of the earth. There is nothing as tragic as a man who lives upon the surface of the earth without knowing the reason why he was born and what he was mandated to do upon the surface of the earth take this very seriously purpose and destiny tonight i trust that god will open up our eyes and grant us the ability to walk in the path of our call the path of our anointing and the path of destiny say amen if you believe that many of you have been praying and say lord why am i here am i just here to escort others in destiny the lord has heard your prayer tonight and that's why i want you to be very attentive hallelujah praise the lord now the word purpose means the intention for creating or manufacturing a thing when you say the purpose of a thing the intent the reason why you manufactured that product please if you're not writing you can kindly ask your neighbor to help you with a sheet of paper or use the notepads on your phone just make sure you are writing this is very important hallelujah so the purpose of a thing is the reason for its existence the reason why it came are you listening to me everything god is a god of purpose say after me god is a god of purpose yes he does not create anything for nothing god is a god who is driven by purpose and everything he creates is supposed to serve a reason these amplifiers these these speakers are supposed to serve a purpose the mic i'm holding is serving a purpose are you listening to me the video camera is serving a purpose the projector is serving a purpose the worship team they are serving a purpose so the purpose of a thing is the reason for its creation the reason for its manufacturing hallelujah it's important that we realize that god didn't just create man listen to me to walk upon the surface of the earth get old get married give birth to children go to church go to the university earn degrees and die that's a terrible testimony and that's the testimony of many people many people there are so many young people even in nigeria they do not understand the purpose of their lives they do not realize that they did not appear on the earth as a biological accident i don't care how you were born are you listening to me it's irrelevant how you came into being the most important thing is that you are here now hallelujah it's important for you to find the original assignment and the intention of god for your life do you realize that every one of us has an assignment earmarked by god it has been predetermined let me tell you something about purpose purpose is not the same as ambition ambition is your desire are you listening to me what you aspire to become by reason of your likes by reason of um your environment and whatever parameters you use purpose is the intention that god put in your heart to serve here in the earth realm when he shot you as an arrow from eternity into time he packaged you for a reason i need you to understand that you don't create your purpose you discover it you don't create purpose let me show you hebrews chapter 10 turn with me quickly to hebrews chapter 10 verse 7 
if we can get it on the amplified that will be okay otherwise any version hebrews chapter 10 verse 7 who is there hebrews 10 verse 7 Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will. Listen, he said, then I said, behold, here I am coming to do your will, O God, to fulfill what is written of me in the volume of the book. To fulfill what? What is written. It has been written. You don't come and walk here on the earth and then one day God just chooses and says, uh, hell, what do we do with Bridget now? And then God just says, oh yeah, you just manage here. No, lo, I come as it is written of me. Say after me, it has been written concerning my life. That's why I know you cannot be a failure. God cannot write failure about you. The Bible says, lo, I come in the volume of the book as it has been written of me the day you find yourself in the book you begin to walk in the path of destiny hallelujah can i tell you something one definition of frustration in life is to walk void of the knowledge of your assignment you will waste energy you will waste resources are you listening to me we used to play um a little game during break when i was in primary school now primary school children play computer games during break time but we used to play a game i don't know how many of you did it you people will walk around and you come i pass here and what will you say i pass here that's how many people are doing in destiny they just get everywhere i like technical i pass here and life will say what no way hallelujah and there's so many people escorting others to the place of destiny god designed that you find fulfillment when you begin to walk in your purpose are you listening to me your joy is in your purpose your peace is in your purpose your prosperity is in your purpose your fame and your influence is in your purpose and the danger is this if you do not find it you will live your life getting offended and angry at those who have found it because you will aspire to become what they already are but you will find out that the road you are taking will always end you up in frustration one more time say after me i was born for a reason i was born for a reason many of you as you are saying it you are laughing at yourself you say me too yes you in luke chapter 4 from verse 17 the bible makes us to understand that jesus do you realize listen to me that jesus was a non-entity until the day he found his purpose is in your bible there was no there was no proof that jesus was an important person that people loved him and valued him until the day when he found something luke chapter 4 you remain a non-entity in life i don't care who you are i don't care how fine you are i don't care who your father is luke chapter 4 verse 17. hallelujah are you there can someone read it for us please he said and there was handed to him the role of the book of the prophet isaiah he said he opened the book and found the place hey and found where the place there is a place for you and he found the place he didn't say he found a place he opened the book in the opening of the book he did what he found the place the place there is the place it's not a place for many people 
it's not a place for competition you know why there's so much competition because many people are trying to be what a few people who have found their purpose have become and the best you can become of another person is a second class of that person your originality is manifested when you find the place next verse verse 18 this is what jesus found the spirit of the lord is upon me hmm. for he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor he has sent me to announce release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind to send forth as delivered those who are oppressed who are downtrodden bruised crushed and broken down by calamity next verse 19 to proclaim the acceptable year of the lord the day when salvation and the free favors of god profusely abound verse 20 listen to what jesus said and he rolled up the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down and the eyes of all in the synagogue were gazing attentively at him 21 and he began to speak to them and said what today your today starts when you discover purpose many of you are celebrating birthday how many how old are you 35 all right that's nice but your today has not started until you begin to walk in purpose he said today this scripture has been fulfilled in other words i am come as a fulfillment of this prophecy what prophecy are you fulfilling your work upon the earth is supposed to be a fulfillment of a prophecy are you listening to me what prophecy are you fulfilling for many of us all that we desire is to just say lord bring a man now to marry me am i not getting old and we believe that that is all to our lives but i want you to know that there is more say there is more say i was born for a reason yes you are. jeremiah chapter one let's look at what god had to tell jeremiah jeremiah chapter one from verse four jeremiah chapter one from verse four are you getting blessed tonight jeremiah chapter one then the word of the lord came to me jeremiah saying now this was jeremiah he was a great prophet born to be a great prophet jeremiah brought the lamentations and caused the nation of israel to walk in the path of the lord but he did not know that that was his divine destiny in christ until it was revealed to him verse 4 okay verse verse 4 please then the word of the lord came to me saying verse 5 before i formed you can we read it together I want to read before i formed you in the womb i knew and approved of you as my chosen instrument and before you were born i separated you and set you apart consecrating you and i appointed you as a prophet to the nation he said what before your father and your mother came together you see why i say you are not a biological accident because i don't care who your father is and who your mother is and how you came mm -mm. he said before you were formed in your mother's womb he said i knew you oh he knows my name that's what the bible says he knows my every thought he sees each tear that falls and he hears me when i call brother do you realize that before you were born it has been written concerning you in other words heaven met come on let me have somebody just anybody let me have somebody bridget god bless you that means when it was time for bridget to come upon the earth the holy spirit didn't just go on an errand and suddenly he just found out that our ah, bridget is coming and they say hey what do we do let her just come we'll find something no no it was well calculated by heaven 
they created a vacuum in the earth and planted Bridget to be the solution, that prophecy, to reveal that dimension of God. And they said, now you can go. And she appeared. But let me tell you something. Your coming upon the earth does not mean that you are going to walk in purpose. You must discover it. Hallelujah. Years ago, I carried my Bible. I carried my jota. And I ran to the dam. ABU dam. Many of you only go there for picnic. We didn't go there for business. Destiny discovering business. And you go there. I will buy bonds and yogurt. 30 naira and bonds. And I will sit down there and flog it out with destiny. And say, Lord, I cannot be a non-entity. There's got to be something about my life. My father didn't tell me what I was born for. Did your father tell you what you were born for? I hope you will tell your children what they were born for. Because it's the responsibility of every father. Before you get your wife pregnant, sit down and say, Lord, what am I doing? Who is coming? What is his destiny? That's what Manoah did. He called the angel. He said, come and tell us what will be the destiny of this child and what we are supposed to do. And he said, he shall be a Nazarene. Let no razor touch his head. He shall be a judge over the house of Israel. Hallelujah. So when you realize that you were born for a reason, it will change your outlook about life. Suddenly, do you know that everyone was created with inferiority complex by default? I don't care whether your father is the president of this country. I have seen great people with inferiority complex. I've seen beautiful ladies, handsome guys with inferiority complex. I've seen millionaires with inferiority complex. Inferiority complex can be tried to solve. You can try to solve it with different things. But only your purpose kills it once and for all. So, you don't solve inferiority complex by prayer. You solve it by discovery. Are you listening to me? When you find your place, that I have a place in life and that you have discovered it and you will walk in that path. Hallelujah. How many of you believe that you have a purpose in Christ? How many of you believe you have an assignment? This discovery helps you because many of us have role models that are not in the area of our purpose and we are struggling and sweating i must be a fashion designer the grace is not there it's not part of your job description in destiny and you are suffering and sweating i must be this thing you are trying and somebody comes to work with ease with the grace that came upon his life are you listening to me there are many of you i must do music this music is selling i must do it nobody is buying your album there are no helpers there are no partners no errands and all to hold your hand you are suffering nobody likes what you are doing you are saying i must still that's the one i want tonight i want you to know that your place in life is not determined by you it's determined by god so outside of god there is no discovery of purpose there is only ambition Are you listening to me? The Bible says he opened the book and he found his place. Without the opening of the book, you will never find your place in life. There are so many people that have been crying, Lord, what am I here for? Let me tell you something. The danger of complex is unimaginable. If you think this message is not important, wait until you get out of this place and you will see how confused your life will be today you want to be like your brother tomorrow you want to be like this person this swaying life purpose gives you stability hallelujah very quickly how do i discover my assignment how do i discover my purpose 
now that you know you were born for a reason i know that many of you have heard it born for a reason born for a reason but it has not dawned on many of you that you should discover the specifics about your life don't say i'm too young joash was age eight when he became the king of israel number one to discover your purpose there are certain parameters that god has put together number one your potentials say after me potentials the word potential comes from the word potent that means it's inherent an ability that has not been tapped yet hallelujah your potential is a pointer to your purpose is a pointer to your assignment your potentials are inherent abilities make sure you write the word inherent they are not gotten by impartation you came with it hallelujah listen look up please there are some of you here from the day you were born from the day you were born as a baby every time you hear music as a little child you just go and stand close to the tv and if they want to take you away you are crying hallelujah from age seven you started singing in children's choir you were the youngest here they couldn't stop you your parents refused that you would not go for riaza the moment they were stopping you one uncle came and said lie lie i used to go and set the sound in the church i'll be taking the person every time you turn towards that area destiny seems to open up doors for you potentials hallelujah from young the leadership mandate not just ministry mandate not just apostolic mandate. everywhere i went in my life i was a leader there are some of you like that class monitor class one two three four five you are the last one in your family but your father will call you and say we're about to make a decision what do you think is making him do that Are you listening to me potential your inherent ability your inherent ability given by god many of you have seen it is glaring before you every day what are your potentials don't say i don't have any are you joking let me list some of them for you it will shock you because many of you do not think they are called potentials there are some of you that are exceptionally beautiful ladies what do you think that is potential do you know in the book of esther the nation of israel was saved by the potential of beauty there was no prophet that prophesied anything there there was no man of god that turned snake into a rod or and it was a the beauty of a woman took her to the palace are you listening to me and she obtained favor and brought salvation to the nation of israel what of your creativity there are some of you who are so creative you have a thousand ways of doing the same thing are you listening to me creativity very important music for some of you when we are suffering to train our voice drinking ginger and honey you take cold water you break all the rules of music but you sing well you pitch to a point that you even you you are surprised let me tell you one proof that is your potential there is ease and grace in that area there is no struggling you like it so much even if they don't pay you you do it with joy while others are crying you cannot believe that they are crying about this thing hallelujah every time you see jimmy and and um assistant music director david every time you see them give them one minute they are playing a new song and you see them laughing i get so bored with what they are doing but you see them nodding i mean they are just enjoying it he said have you had this i just had this recent download by by um john picky and they are playing and dancing you know and just enjoying themselves and are leaping i'm saying can these guys get out of here there are many of you when you are about to sleep and they just tune to a fashion channel 
you just wipe sleep from your eyes and you can sit down till the next day while we are sleeping then when they tune Benny in, I'm watching, I'm happy, I'm laughing. You are angry because I'm not giving you room to tune to the channel. You are saying, what is it? Benny Hinn, such a boring man. You are my hiding place. Yes, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. Listen, I hope you are getting my point. There are many of you from the day you came to ABU, you love your class. Even when you finish exam, you just go and sit down there and you are smiling. And your colleagues listen 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 your colleagues do not even understand are you listening to me you have started becoming ashamed they've called you everything bookworm prof it's not like you like it you can't stop it even when you're about to sleep after 10 minutes you just touch your book and just use your touch and glance through something briefly before you close it and your roommate is saying this guy is frustrating us could it be that there is a voice in prison crying inside of you wanting to find expression there are many of you who are leaders when you were age five you were behaving as if you were 15 years old when your colleagues are playing you sit down and be thinking like this your father will say, what kind of stupid boy are you? Your colleagues are playing, eating sand. And he said, daddy, no, we can't eat sand. And your father is saying, Jesus Christ. I be this guy is the incarnate of one elderly man. You see a small, have you seen little children like that? Very mature. Something touches their clothes and they are even cleaning it and they are careful. You want to go and bath them at age three or four? They are saying no. Say, just wait outside. You are like, what in the world is happening to this generation? Potential. Your ability. Are you listening to me? Your first assignment tonight is write the list of all your potentials. Write it. I wrote it. Hallelujah. I knew I had the call of God upon my life. I didn't know how it was going to start. And when God was teaching me this, all of this drama happened in the dark. God told me, write it. I said, sing it. Oh, then I had a beautiful voice. I had not laid it as opportunity cause for ministry. I had a beautiful voice. Hallelujah. But you can't serve two masters at the same time. Hallelujah. That's why God brought a beautiful worship team. If you preach the way I'm doing, your voice cannot be smooth hallelujah and i wrote singing and then i wrote teaching oh i love teaching i love teaching i can sit down do you know i was so obsessed about teaching i will soon reveal many of your secrets to you i will lock myself sometimes in the room and you imagine yourself teaching how many of you and you teach so well and now my own is not teaching in class or teaching the word and I'm teaching and I imagine myself talking to people and I tell you as I'm doing it the anointing of God comes truly as if God is not playing say if you like be playing you are doing rehearsal do you know this is how I learned how to preach I would stand at the foundation we had one empty foundation in our house they wanted to start a construction they're very and I'll stand and I'll imagine a crowd of people and I'll tell them turn with me to the book of this little did I know I was killing the bear and the lion in the wilderness Many of you, every time you're in your room, you just lock your room and put two chairs. And you say, um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We're on to ministry today. Aha. Uh -huh. Many of you are saying, hey, it's not word of knowledge. It's word of wisdom. I know it should happen to you. Hallelujah. And you have passion. Every time you tell your roommates, they laugh at you. But there is something crying inside of you. The next thing, your passion your passion your passion what is it that you would do if you were not paid there are many of you that love some things it's not the issue of money there are things in my life that i do with passion for instance what i'm doing oh boy i can preach till tomorrow morning i tell you if i'm tired it's just for your sake i can preach till morning once you make a mistake of giving me this mic, even if you don't give me a Bible, God recorded small of it in my head. And that one that I have, I will preach it out. 
sometimes when i'm going for night vigil people just pity me i say are you joking i'm enjoying myself seriously the exact same feeling you receive in the kitchen is what i'm receiving now hallelujah passion what do you have passion for do you realize that many of you are doing things you don't have passion for you are angry you are frustrated stop it you must not do it you are doing it because you belong to friends who are doing it hallelujah stop frustrating yourself and begin to pursue the areas that you have passion because there is grace there the last point discovering your purpose steps to discover your purpose the last point is the place of your pain and your anger the place of consistent pain and anger everywhere you keep receiving consistent pain and anger there is an assignment there for you are you listening to me moses the the grace for a deliverer was upon him and when he saw that his people were being oppressed what happened he was angry to a point that he killed a man later in the years he would be the deliverer of those people there are things that make me angry i hate it when i see that people do not love god i hate it when people disrespect god and don't have a passion for the things of the spirit i hate it when people do not live by the principles of the kingdom i hate it when satan oppresses people i hate seeing sick people i hate poverty i hate poverty with my life i hate the effect it has created on people i hate the effect that on society my anger my pain many of you have been rejecting your pain will you go back and revisit your pain right now when you were young you were abused when you were age 12 you were ab you hate men you hate everybody would it be that there is an assignment for you there are you listening to me there are many of you who just sit down and you get concerned about people's relationship even if it's not your business they have insulted you you are tired you have gone to repent before god but you find yourself there again could it be that you have the grace to be a life coach to help people hallelujah there are many of you when you were born anything they give you you give it out anything they give you sweet you are crying but you give somebody else and your mother will call you and slap your head and say oh lord i'm i'm training a dull child and you cannot even help it could it be that you are a kingdom financier could it be that there is grace for you to release and equip the body your pain what have you gone through in life do you think it's a waste are you listening to me your pain has grace let me tell you something about pain every time you conquer a situation in the spirit authority is given unto you to bring others out so moses feels the pain and the tragedy that's why see i went many of you don't know why i i i trust god and contend for the anointing for miracles and to heal the sick i went to have shared with you the challenge i had look i've gone through sickness in this my life Many of you say what kind of yeah now every time miracles it's not your fault the day you are sick and the doctor tells you they cannot do anything about your situation you will see the relevance of what we are doing hmm. hallelujah grace your pain can become the testimony so write your pain what are the things you have gone through in life that you are angry about this is a workshop tonight make sure you are writing please what are the things you've gone through there are many of you who you have suffered inferiority you have suffered complex to a point that you don't know what to do with yourself again could it be that you are sent as a deliverer to many like you hmm. hallelujah Where are the next Steve Jobs, Warren Buffett, the next 
world changers who will take this kingdom for the king your purpose have you discovered your purpose I read that book by Dr. Miles Munro, Discovering Your Potentials. It changed my life forever. I started getting angry with my life and I said, Lord, I cannot be like this. I cannot be like this. I gave myself a time space that I must discover why I'm on earth. I refused to celebrate my birthday. I told myself until I discover my call. There are many of you, you have the biggest party and you don't know why you are on earth one year before your birthday you have started planning as soon as you finish this one you are, you are planning the next one you you handle drinks you you handle the hotel we are booking and you have no idea while you are dancing whether it's christian or secular that's not my business so long as you do not you have no right to celebrate your birthday until you have discovered why you are living there are many guys that don't know what they're on earth for and your eyes will not allow ladies to move peacefully any lady you look you are just smiling do you not realize that she's supposed to be a help me when you are going out with her where are you going to where we are going out there to where do you know where you are going take what i'm saying seriously tonight do you know where you are going hallelujah The first thing God did is to reveal his assignment in the garden. Then when Adam began to walk, God saw a need for Eve. Guys, if you have not discovered your purpose, I tell you, relationship will kill you. Because you will not have direction. A day will come, there's nothing to talk about again. You have talked about all the cartoons. You have talked about the lady's hair. What else do you talk about? The lady keeps asking you questions you cannot answer. So, where are we going? So I can start planning my life in light of where you are showing me. And you say, let's just be going. Even Abraham, God told him, let's go. Hallelujah. Discovering your potentials. Listen. When you discover your potentials, in it, you will find your uniqueness this is the secret of self-confidence your uniqueness is not in your similarity with others i mean your 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 greatness in life is not in your similarity i'm not the only preacher in the world but there's nobody that does it like me i have my way of doing my thing hallelujah i have found my place in the ministry I'm fulfilled in finding my place. I'm exploring the paths that God has earmarked for me. Many ministries are frustrated because they do not have vision, they don't have purpose, and so they are trying to do everything. That's why you see all kinds of people. Today they are apostles, tomorrow they are prophets. Later on they say, Kai, is it that I'm an evangelist? I'm not very sure. They are everything. You tell him, What are you? You say, I'm a multi talented minister. What is the meaning of that? hallelujah you find people in life let me tell you something you cannot be everything many of you have written what you want to do and what you want to do is what the whole world will be doing you will die you better cancel it and find out what god wants you to do say i was born for a reason listen to me you are sitting down to to listen to me by grace because i discovered my potentials are you listening to me can we sit down tomorrow and listen to you because you have discovered your potentials when i was in the dam crying and praying there was nobody nobody was calling me apostle or joshua selman or whatever but i knew that that discovery held the key to the fulfillment of my life i tell you i live a fulfilled life i've not started the journey yet but i'm enjoying the fulfillment to be in the heart and the center of what god wants me to do no competition that's why i don't have enemies in my life when i said are you joking your enemies are the people you have been trying to you are angry because they are walking in their path and then you are you are wondering what to do with your own life 
and every time you see them their zeal frustrates you because they are committed to do some things and you are wondering why am i not having that same kind of zeal when you find out your assignment i tell you you will not sleep because of it hallelujah when you discover your potentials when you discover your abilities they are pointers to your destiny although discovery and revelation is progressive but when you have the tools it begins to guide you are you listening to me it begins to guide you if you see someone holding a stethoscope who is that you cannot say that's a carpenter are you listening to me a carpenter has nothing to do with a stethoscope when you see someone holding a scissors holding needle and thread who is that person that's a tailor is that a caterer so when you begin to gather your tools what happens it begins to give you direction when you put those tools together you find out that these tools are leading me to the ministry they are leading me to the ministry every time you stand and you see sinners you cry whenever you watch Reinhard Bonke you cry something in you every time you see Jake's on stage something tells you there is a place for you in destiny there are many of you every time you see me preach something in you tells you you will be standing to hold this mic like this every time i'm shouting it people are laughing but you are not laughing there is something attracting you years ago every time i saw benny Hinn and i saw certain ministers of god sometimes i will go back crying I will, how many of you have had that kind of feeling you will cry for days you cannot tell exactly why you are crying but you are crying anyway it's a cry of passion You must discover your purpose when you discover your your potentials what do you do listen the next thing is you begin to develop it develop it develop it refine it I beg you take what I'm teaching you tonight seriously develop it develop it the process of developing your potentials it's a very difficult process this is where the boys are separated from the men because we live in a generation where many people do not want responsibility we believe that God is supposed to do everything but the moment let me tell you something that when people say they are idle it's because they have not found what to work on your purpose will occupy you 24 hours will pass you will not know there are some of you where you sit down and there is you have written over five books when you sit down writing it you sit down by 4 a.m in the morning and when you check the time is 8 p.m in the night and your colleagues come and say you are here passion passion is dangerous it it brings obsession you cannot stop hallelujah develop it say in the name of jesus Say it as loud as you can in the name of Jesus. I receive grace to develop my potential. See, men of purpose are not people who are idly wasting their time. There are many people, let me say it again, there are so many people wasting their time every day visitation to visitation room to room your job is you don't know what to do with your time you're just moving if they say where are you going they say let's go to this place you say okay when you are a man of purpose there is direction in your life you value your time you know that your time is precious the greatest gift god gave you aside from his son and the holy spirit is the gift of time every other thing you will do is in time many of us sit down and you are sleeping from morning till night you just check and say 5 p.m ah, ah, which kind of siesta did i have today purpose will occupy you your purpose will help you to know the kind of books to buy listen many of you have made friends with people who have broken your heart because you do not know your purpose when you find your purpose you will see a group of people that you belong to he told he said when you go you will step into a band of prophets and you will begin to prophesy like them many of you do not know the kind of groups to belong 
even in church many of you don't know what departments to serve in because you do not know your purpose many of you don't have friends today because everywhere you go in you don't fit when you step into the place that has the oil of your purpose you will fit perfectly that's why many of you got into mistakes in your relationship and got into big trouble you know why because for many people out of that desperation to find a friend that can appeal to you suddenly you just see a brother how great he just ad lips and something attracts you and then you misunderstand that attraction and you land into trouble are you getting me when you discover your purpose see the moment you begin to develop your purpose you begin to develop your potentials self-confidence begins to come not pride self-confidence suddenly you find out that i used to be afraid of telling people where i'm coming from i used to be afraid of telling people my father was a carpenter now it doesn't matter anymore let me tell you something when you know when i was in primary school into secondary school there's a hairstyle punk how many of you remember punk if the barber messes up that punk he can spoil your face and the ladies will not like you so then because we did not discover our purpose that was our obsession when you go to the barbing saloon the barber better don't play with you especially when it's time to go to the church the pastor's daughter is there there are many vips there you can't go and mess up yourself but when i began to walk in purpose i just found out that i'll go to the barbing saloon and i'm thinking i'm just telling the guy just clean my hair make it nice there are many things that are occupied do you know that many things you think about is because you don't have any other thing to think about when you truly are occupied with purpose you will just stand and say ah am i sure it's my it's my it's my shoe many of you are too meticulous guys carry comb in their pocket you are moving and you carry nonsense when you find purpose even if your head is scattered because you are thinking it will not matter again yes I will say it again yes see a guy behaving like a lady just be nice yeah. uh -uh. hallelujah purpose when you find your purpose you are grateful to God you live a life of gratitude you stop being angry let me tell you something when you find your purpose your potentials your place in life do you know what it will do to you it will make you to honor and value those who have found their own because you will see that it's not child's play many people disrespect the anointing upon people because you have not found your place so you don't know the level of discipline that it takes to get to that point when you see the minister sit down it's easy to look at them and say I beg you, Jare. this guy self oh, is i have the ability to do that same kind of thing because you know when god calls you you feel you are calling to the ministry you touch three or four people they fall they say ah, ah it's jake's not doing it then as you begin to progress in purpose when you begin to encounter certain things hallelujah and you begin to pray and build yourself and after praying for hours and building yourself you will see only grace you are seeing in the life of the people you will start respecting them and say so uneasy lies the head that wears this crown let me give you a little story about us do you know we don't watch films there are only few times it's even these days we start watching christian films it's not like it's a taboo it's the sacrifice for the anointing you come to visit me you will watch worship songs and messages and you will read books and you'll be tired No wonder you are antisocial, but we are still anointed. Are you listening to me? When you discover your purpose and you begin to walk in it, I tell you every day as I progress in ministry, every day I keep saluting the fathers of faith that have gone ahead of us because I know that that's not this. Managing people, becoming successful is one thing. Managing success is another thing when you become a minister everything about your life is a subject of discussion it takes stamina and audacity to move through are you listening to me when you begin to walk in purpose you will respect people suddenly you will turn 
as you are becoming a man you will turn and look at your father and say hey so this is why my father used to shout he's really not a bad man now that i'm becoming a man i'm finding out that there are responsibilities that can make men become draculas so that's why my father has become what he is right now shouting and yelling at everybody now you are collecting money from home many of you mommy giving me this daddy give me this the moment you step into responsibility for yourself suddenly you get up and find out that nobody is going to send you money and you drop an application for a job and maybe the job is not coming and you sit back a brother calls you and says sorry brother can you send me two thousand at that point you start having a foretaste of what your father is going through that you are insulting him for listen discovery of purpose makes you respect people are you listening to me if you do not discover purpose you will never honor people who have gone ahead of you because you will trivialize their sacrifice you will trivialize it you are insulting your father for not having a jeep but he has a house that you are inside the day you are about to get married and you go out you have your money but you can't find a house you will salute your father are you listening to me the day they make you a class monitor and your class members want to beat you because you did not advocate for them for assignment you say oh so what of those who are leaders over thousands many of you who sit down just wish and say hey i wish i was joshua selman speaking to hundreds and thousands of people in Kono. this guy is enjoying you know they are giving him water please come and sit down and take the water i promise you listen i give you three days you will cry and run with my anointing and bring it back and give me i promise you hallelujah you see john for prophesy and you are laughing kai how can he know about your life the day you tell somebody something and they lock you for it that day you will say whether you really want to be a prophet or not are you listening to me discovery of purpose makes you to honor the grace upon people every day i keep respecting let me tell you something my outlook for my father and my mother changed when i started taking responsibility for my life i knew it was not child's play with all the tongues i'm speaking with all of this i say so now they were not filled with the holy ghost they were not praying in tongues they are not hearing what you are hearing but they try to do what they have done many of you after now you need to go and send text messages to your parents and tell them you love them and you respect them you have been insulting them and say only ten thousand is not a shame his mate the elrufa is his classmate okay very soon say you have told your father you marry in two years very soon you will see what it means to be a man you will see what it means to be a woman many of you who stand and speak to your mothers and just insult them and say mommy let me tell you i'm not a small girl again no please don't insult i will wash you now a small child poops in front of you and you're like ah, ah, and you want to be a mother huh welcome to the world of reality when every childishness is washed away by time and wisdom hallelujah are you getting me these messages that i preach are hard messages but they are messages for those who are interested in their destiny not everybody likes me and i understand that but if you will listen let me tell you something about a life there is a difference between teaching and training are you listening to me a teacher can share but when you are being trained when you are being coached that's not the time to pamper you are you listening to me that's not the time to pamper you a coach presses you to bring out the best in you and then when it's time for the race and you take first position the sower and the reaper are both happy Many of you may say, why is this guy always shouting? His messages are always hard. You will appreciate it. When you step out and see the difference between you and others, you will thank God for this word you are receiving today. Are you listening to me? You are receiving it free. But let me tell you, those who are not receiving it today will pay for it tomorrow. It will not be as free as it is today. Are you listening to me? They will pay for it. And many will pay. I'm not talking of paying with money. They will pay with time. 
they will pay with their tears to receive some of these truths say I was born for a reason I was born for a reason I always told myself this there is something about my life I'm not a non-entity I'm not a non-entity today when I confess it I know it is true look at what the Lord has done in my life do you know every time I'm sharing with you this to the glory of God I have seen the honor of God in my life I have seen the blessings of God I saw my head boy today he was two years my senior when I was in SS1 in secondary school he was the senior prefect I saw him today I saw him on bike and he was just running and he was going to discuss with somebody and tears filled my eyes I think it was IK who was driving me I said once upon a time this guy was my head boy today he calls me sir what takes a man from a place where he's nobody are you listening to me to a place of prominence the Lord has honored me in my little life within this country outside this country I have seen the mercies of God I have seen the grace of God the things that people run after God has honored me with this is what I want your life to at least become my greatest goal is for the least of you to be better than me there is no reason why you should be the same as me if you become the same as me I have failed my prayer my cry every time I pray for you I say Lord let the least among us be as great as them I hope you appreciate what you are receiving you see let me tell you something there are many of you that do not know the sacrifice of bringing the word of God to you it's easy speakers are all arranged are you listening to me chairs are arranged all people pray and you just come in and stroll in and sit down let's hear what he has to say ah. in the days of Samuel when the word was cast many of you God is intercepting your life because you did not receive this training from home many of you came from every different kinds of backgrounds but God is intercepting your life to change you I hope you value it I hope you take it serious my son the Bible says pay attention to my words incline your ears to my sayings do not let them depart from your eyes keep them in the midst of your heart yes ago let me tell you this I shared with some of my classmates what I'm sharing with you many of them laughed at me many of them thought we were just being ambitious and being stupid people today by the grace of God and the sure mercies of David the gap between me and my contemporaries far by far are you listening to me everything I spoke and I prophesied I have seen a major part of it today in my life that which we have seen that which we have heard that which our hands have handled of the word of life we declare unto you in 2006 when we were leading a people for crusade they insulted us they called us all kinds of names but by the grace and the mercy of God today you are a proof of our apostleship if it is true that we are called if it is true that we are anointed you are the testament of the fact that God is at work in this place but tomorrow it will be your turn are you listening to me tomorrow the stage will be opened and it will be your turn to bring the word of the Lord to the nations in ministry in business in life whatever you are going through today endure it develop your potentials don't be too quick to start manifesting uh -uh, uh -uh. David killed the bear he killed the lion but he went back to the secret place do you know compared to where God is taking me I am still under rehearsals I keep telling people I'm still under training you have not seen the best of me yet uh -uh. what you are seeing today is the prophecy of yesterday tomorrow you will know what I'm speaking today I've seen many of you have seen yourself in visions every time you sleep you see yourself a leader over others a ministry over churches there are many of you here there are churches and ministries apostolic ministries prophetic ministries music ministries financial ministries businesses locked up inside of you waiting for manifestation 
there are many of you you are the next media moguls you are the next opera winfrey's and the rest you are the people who will come and interview us you are the ones who will change the course of history do you believe this about yourself i am motivating you tonight we are going to pray and that prayer is a cry you are going to say lord help me i don't care whether you are young or old many people covering their purpose hear me friends if you do not discover your purpose you will join the queue of frustration that is going on in nigeria many jobless people parading the streets of nigeria they graduated with first class they graduated with two one they have nothing to do with their lives i hope you know listen to me i hope you know many of our parents who are suffering today they they are filled with the holy ghost hello but in spite of their being filled with the holy ghost in spite of their bible study they are still suffering pastor chris said something that i respect so much he said you cannot pack in the same parking lot of your parents and expect a different result that's why god is intercepting your life i made up my mind that i was not going to follow the road of a failure are you listening to me right now is the time to sow the bible says he that weepeth bearing precious seeds listen what will kill many of you is convenience you like convenience too much that christianity of on i'm not saying i'm not against comfort but let the days come many of you see me wearing suits today and you want to go and buy my kind of suit find out what i was doing when i was i say it with all humility you see ministers stand and you want to do what they are doing you want to eat food in shagalinku instead of you to carry that 500 naira and buy a book do you know one of the biggest problems we have in the church our fathers have lied to us they have refused listen they have refused to open up their clothes and show us their scars they hide their scars and they tell us just speak it and it will happen but i'm not hiding it i hope you appreciate it many people lie to you they say ah, i've never suffered in my life i just moved and things began to happen hallelujah are you joking are you playing for there is a scar paul said let no man trouble me for i bear in my body the mark of christ there is a mark that you receive now even jesus christ has the mark that brought him greatness those scars are still in his hands don't be ashamed of your scars don't let new creation teaching make you fool yourself and be ashamed of your scars many of you because of your testimony you drink gary keep drinking it and saying my life is better there is something in my life i cannot afford it today i'm not ashamed of my one trouser i will not be covetous no no i cannot afford 300 naira cream i will use the homemade vaseline but as i'm using it i'm saying lord i thank you my destiny will blossom and will show up one day if you came tonight to hear a word that will change you this is it i'm preaching tonight from the depth of my heart and i hope you appreciate what i'm telling you you may not be able to make your hair don't envy anybody you don't know how they got there just pay the price pay the price he that weepeth bearing precious seeds i made up my mind 10 years ago that i was not going to be poor so don't see me today and some of the blessings that god is helping me i didn't make the resolution last year you will frustrate yourself if you want to be like me in three days are you listening to me somebody came to td jakes and said i want the anointing upon your life he said you are such an influential man new york's best time a bestseller i want the anointing on your life and he nailed down and td jakes says lord send him tribulations lord send him persecution for every time you ask God for the throne, you will see a Goliath standing in front of you. If you cannot kill that Goliath, you are not going to the throne. I assure you, friends, many people will speak against the message I'm teaching you today. And they'll say, I'm not helping you. But the future will tell. Are you listening to me? We are going to pray. But let me just learn something in my spirit. Pay the price. I do not see many people who are paying the price. Many of us don't pay the price in the place of prayer. Many of us don't pay the price in the place of duty. 
how many of you you said god has called you to be a kingdom financier how many books on finance have you read i assure you i don't care if a gallon of oil is poured on your head you will never become a millionaire god's way no sir it doesn't work that way you want to get married next year how many books on fatherhood have you read how many books on godly parenting have you read am i challenging you in this place you want to get into a relationship how many books about men have you read you think a man is another woman god has told you you are a leader why don't you become an uncommon leader go and goggle principles of godly leadership buy tapes buy books you are sitting down mid semester break you hear that there is a leadership summit happening in abuja quickly carry your remaining three thousand and run there go and sit down quietly and listen to generals of the faith speak before you criticize them listen to them you have not gotten to where they are getting so shut your mouth and just listen first no matter how much mistakes they are making it's not by trial and error they establish those levels of grace you have something to learn are you listening to me sit down under that anointing see many of you I, let me tell you something there are many of you who i pray that you don't regret the opportunities you have today are you listening to me sometimes you see the ministers they wear jeans like you they laugh like you be careful so you don't get too familiar you're not standing in the same realm if i were you i will run one day and pin one minister and buy him zobo and say teach me something about leadership and refuse say i will not let you go many of you don't know how to press for your destiny are you listening to me go around zaria go and go go who are the ministers and the leaders that have displayed the quality of what you want god has told you you are going to have a miracle ministry you are just sitting down and lying down you think the holy ghost will come upon you just like that hallelujah many of you may need to contribute money you and your roommate contribute money and buy my tv and put in your room people say ah enjoyment you know what you are pursuing are you listening to me you are not dressing well you have one shirt but you have a set light and you have a tv people say what kind of enjoyment is that you know what you are pursuing while those messages are playing you are saying lord i receive there is grace i receive are you listening to me go and buy tapes buy mp3s worship people refuse average in your life refuse it from class run and go somewhere see i challenge you see i am on my knees begging you listen to me i'm on my knees begging you if you take what i'm saying seriously you will be a champion in life but if you play with what i'm saying you will see how messed up your life will become hallelujah i'm preaching tonight from my heart that which i have i give unto you enough of failures in life it takes sacrifice you will cry oh let me tell you i'm not the kind of person that will preach that gospel to you your crying is not because you are backsliding he that weepeth bearing precious seeds you are holding your seeds lord enough is it's not much that is coming but i will keep giving i will keep tithing i will support your house lord just one shed but i will give i have two sheds but i will still sow one lord i am serious i am diligent in the place of prayer people may insult me but i continue my roommate said i don't have perfume my body is smelling but let me be a prayerful smelling person i am still praying oh lord i keep praying and then your glory will break forth like the morning and you will rise a day will come everything you are longing for you will get it at a platter of gold did i ever know that a day will come in my life when i will not need to think of what to eat again those days are here are you listening to me the car you don't have today stop admiring and claiming cars sit down and start working on yourself every car that pass i claim it far 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 foul that gospel that they taught you better repent of it this night that's covetousness not claiming you sit down and partner with the holy ghost and you will become a champion stay with your bible in the place of 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 sacrifice listen i want to see a situation where from tomorrow morning from this night all of us are working 
wake up in the morning write something about your life don't waste your time any see your enemy is the person that comes to distract you don't be afraid to tell people now is not the time to gist you are walking when you are walking somebody just comes ah i so you just smile and tell them sorry but i'm doing a little work and i say eh, stupid people they always try to claim they are serious if you are ashamed of your reputation you will not be great in life you must die to be a champion great men are those who have died in themselves Paul said, I die daily. Hallelujah. One last point to discovering your purpose is service. You will never be a leader until you become a good servant. Many people see me today and think I was just crossing my legs. And then the anointing just came. Bam! And God said, Josh, get up. Here is suit. Wear quickly and start ministry. You think so? I shared my story when I used to play there's a man called Reverend Emmanuel Amechi I don't know where that man is power praise chapel then his church I used to play keyboard for him 1996 I would play keyboard for him let me tell you something the only thing I remember them doing for me once was during the launching of his uh, of this they gave me one cassette and one Fanta that's the only thing they did for those of you who do something say the way we are singing we are, we are serving in koinonia ushering they are supposed to be paying us so say you are rich leave please leave we are looking for serious destiny don't you know that you are learning your destiny free of charge see you kill yourself and it happens a lot to musicians you have not gone anywhere you are saying they should pay me don't you know that you are learning hallelujah when you find yourself serving in a church or in a body never complain see it as an opportunity to learn it will give you discipline are you listening to me discipline you cannot be a leader until you are a good servant you must be able to serve you will learn the discipline and the regiments of service many of you as you are serving one day they will give you they will give you an opportunity they will say now um, Josiah, please help us to lead prayers five minutes. That will be the first time you will be uncovering the grace of God upon your life. You who has thought that you are not anointed, that day you just stand. Five minutes prayer, you change the atmosphere. Suddenly, it leaves you with a question. How many of you has that happened to? Your faculty fellowship, they just say, there's a choir. Uh, Femi, just lead uh, 20 minutes praise and worship and you lead praise and worship and people dance after the choir they keep singing your song and then you start discovering that there's something about me service service is the place of discovery many of you who are not serving in the house of god you call that smartness you are cheating yourself you learn a lot of things are you listening to me you serve god take responsibility for your life stop insulting your father and mother and say if my father was smarter i'll be better if my mother was this i'll be better if they were sending me more pocket money no don't be ashamed of your tears stop leaving a realm that you have not yet gotten to you will get there ladies you will not have to change your weave on every two two days you don't have that kind of money stop frustrating yourself a day will come you will own a boutique you will own a spa a spa center you can change your hair every day stop killing yourself right now the brothers know you are laboring to enter your rest and they appreciate it hallelujah and for the guys do your best stop borrowing clothes from everybody so that you will be smart be contented with what you have say kai that lady looked at my leg when we were talking the last time i beg help me with your canvas why must you pretend You borrow car, you borrow Blackberry, you borrow everything. You don't know how to use it. You put yourself under pressure. You carry 50,000 that God bless you with. I need to buy a baby. Need to buy a baby. Don't sit down and press for your destiny. What is it about a Blackberry that, that you cannot get? Are you listening to me? I'm challenging you tonight. Away with childlessness. When I was a child, I thought like a child. I acted like a child. Like a child when you become a man you lay aside childish things rise up on your feet and let's pray 
Bless the Lord for tonight. Manda baka prostefete kete baladavash. Purpose and destiny. Dan tepra katabasi kete baladavash. Go ahead and pray in the spirit. Say, Lord, I bless you for this word. I receive your word with meekness. I receive your word with gladness. Yes, I commend you to the word of his grace that is able to make you wise and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. Shabari Pray. Say, Lord, tonight I receive grace to discover my purpose. I refuse to be a non entity. I stop wasting my life. I stop wasting my time. I pay the price. Pray. Lord, reveal to me what am I on earth for? Why am I here? Why did you bring me here? Mataka Patalabasa. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. I called you. I separated you to be a prophet unto the nations. And Jeremiah said, I am a young man. He said, I'm a young man. God said, No, I will put my word in your mouth. And you will declare, Don't be afraid of them. Let entrepreneurs arise. Let apostolic ministries arise. Prophetic ministries arise. Evangelistic ministries arise. Let businessmen arise. Kingdom financiers arise. Life coaches arise. Come on, pray. Media giants arise. Educationists arise in the name that is above every name. Managers arise. Pastors arise. Apostles arise. Prophets arise. Interior decoration giants, I call you arise. Kingdom caterers, arise. Sportsmen, arise. Kingdom celebrities, beauticians, consultants, the kingdom needs you. In the name of Jesus, arise. Scientists, arise. Manufacturers arise, music ministers in the name of Jesus arise. Come on, pray. I discover my assignment. I discover my assignment in the name of Jesus. I find my place in life. I stop escorting men. I stop escorting men. I find my place. The place of glory, the place of victory, the place of breakthrough. No, I come in the volume of the book as it is written concerning me to do your will. Pray. I am not a nobody. My world will celebrate me. Prophesy to yourself. Nigeria will hear your voice. Africa will hear your voice. The Moses of our time, the Joshua's of our time, the Elijah's of our time. Rise up, generals. Rise up, generals. Pray. I find my place in life. I pay the price. I read the books, I pray, 
I give, I serve my way into glory. You are a celebrity. You are a champion. God will give you the fame. God will give you the grace. He will give you prosperity like you have never seen. He will give you anointing. The husband will come. The wife will come. But stay in the place of destiny. Stop giving excuses. Stop giving excuses. Repent tonight. Flimsy excuses. Stop giving excuses. Take responsibility over your life. Stop blaming the government. Stop blaming your parents. Stop blaming your background. Stop blaming your uncle. Take responsibility for your life. Come and pray. Shake the kepata. Go support us, kepata. Let the kepoto se pregere Let the least among us be as mighty as David. You will preach this message to your congregations. You will preach this message to your children. You will preach this message to your business partners. You will preach this message. One day you will be on air. One day you will be on satellite. The world will hear you. You will make reference to this day. I open up the portals of destiny over your life. I open up the portals of purpose over your life. Let revelation come. Let revelation come. I prophesy to you, find your place. 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 There is a place for you. Only you. Only you. You are an answer. You are a solution to a problem. Don't rob us. Don't rob us. There is something about your life that our generation needs. Don't die with your gift. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. While I say this, I want to say something important. But if you are coming here for the first time, for time's sake, please run out while I say this. If this is your first time, just walk out, we'll pray for you. While, I'm, while you are coming out, listen everybody. The gift of a man. Please, if this is your first time, please come out while I'm speaking. The gift of a man. Make it room. Say after me, make it room. Say the gift of a man. The potentials of a man makes room for him and brings him before great people. Say the gift of a man brings him before great men. If you find your gift, you find your place in life. Once upon a time, I was a nobody but the gift that the Lord has given has made room for me. That's why there is no boasting because it's the election of grace. Can we listen to you tomorrow? Can you stop giving excuses? All kinds of excuses. We live in a world where the youth in Nigeria, there is no other place in the world where the youth shy away from responsibility like Nigeria. We run away from responsibility. That's why people like a God that does everything. No, sir. That kind of Christianity, we bury it in this place. Hallelujah. Write the following books, please. I know those of you who are here, they will remember. Please write the following books. Buy it. 
check the library if they have the books get it discovering your potentials by dr miles munro discovering your potentials by dr miles munro discovering your potentials then understanding your potentials still by dr miles munro understanding your potentials god's big idea still by dr miles munro the purpose driven life by rick warren the purpose driven life rick warren the purpose driven life by rick warren have you written that oh dear there is one on my mind right now i just forgot lord help me i have to bring this out trying to remember I just forgot it right now finishing strong by who Steve Farah finishing strong you need to read that book finishing strong by Steve Farah these books will help you you can explore others go to jordan bookstore tomorrow wake jordan from his house and say i need my destiny my destiny must move forward come and open your bookstore get these books sit down listen some of you can form little groups among yourself instead of gisting and gossiping about people sit down give yourself an assignment do you understand you read stefara's book you read my small rose own and then you come and have a little bible study there's nothing wrong you edify yourself it will drive away visionless people from your life turn your room into a place of vision don't allow anybody come into your room and use it as a place of gossip and backbiting and asking you useless questions do you like that guy tell him look i'm, I'm studying if you are not going to help me in my destiny please walk out thank you jesus Please stretch your hands as we pray for those who are just coming. Thank you for coming. We love you. Thank you for spending time. I pray that tonight's meeting will change your life forever. It changed mine. We bless you with the blessings of the heavens. We bless you with the blessings of the earth. We declare in the name of Jesus that from tonight, you begin to walk in purpose. You begin to walk in the path of destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ, every complex, every inferiority, everyone who has talked you down and made you feel like there is nothing about your life i prophesy and i announce to you that tonight is the beginning of a great day those who have laughed at you will laugh with you in the name of the lord jesus christ hallelujah thank you so much for coming we really appreciate you i'd like you to quickly follow the ushers they'll have your information and they'll greet you quickly god bless you we believe you have been blessed by this message for additional information, call 081-3832-5463 or 080-3350-8935 or 080-3400-3936. You can visit us on Facebook on www.facebook.com slash Koinonia Eternity Network International or follow us on Twitter www.twitter.com slash koinonia underscore eni Hello beloved in Christ we hope this message was a blessing to you I would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season, 
it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise i decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain 